Good evening, I'm Dean Abbott. And I'm Sarah Chernis. It's Tuesday, August 24th, and in news headlines tonight, a weekend shooting in Aurora has now become a homicide as the victim succumbs to her injuries. And Naperville school district officials have come to contract terms with their teachers' union. A decision is nearing on who will get the last riverboat gaming license in the state of Illinois. And Montgomery officials will ask residents on the fall ballot whether they want to be removed from the Oswego Library District. We'll have these and other stories coming up tonight on TV 30 News. the biggest, it's the best, it's the fun-filled family place in town. It's Funway Entertainment Center in Batavia, located off Route 25, just off the Fox Valley Bike Trail. Try your hand at miniature golf, step up to the baseball and softball batting cages, take to the wheel of the competitive skid cars, or bump your way around in bumper cars. The new attraction everyone will be challenging, the Crazy Maze, or the state-of-the-art sound and climate-conditioned roller skating. It's always a big hit. Come spin your wheels at Funway Entertainment Center, Route 25 in Batavia. Getting there is all the fun. Wow! Tortilla chips! Not ordinary tortilla chips. Our new chachos are flour tortilla chips. Flour? We're making new keeper chachos. We're making new keeper chachos. Lightly crispy chachos. Flour tortilla chips. Hey, hey! We're making cheesy quesadilla. We're making cinnamon crispagna. And if I want to dip it all, we're making restaurant Ridge original. New keeper chachos! Lightly crispy flour tortilla chips. Hey! Now there's a Liquid Lever 2000 for your germiest parts. Pokey parts and parts that explore. Playful parts and parts that do chores. Parts that you suck on or stick in your ear. Parts that hold on to the parts you hold dear. New Liquid Lever 2000. It not only kills germs, it helps keep germs from coming back. So it's as good for parts that go roaming as it is for parts that stay home. New Liquid Lever 2000, the antibacterial liquid that's better for your skin and all your 2000 parts. Police are now seeking the man who allegedly shot an Aurora woman to death late Sunday night. Police say that a warrant charging murder has been issued for 24-year-old Sean Roscoe Judge of the 300 block of Old Indian Trail. Judge is accused of shooting a 20-year-old Peggy Lee Richardson who lived in the same apartment complex in the head after she refused to talk to it. It was later discovered, according to reports, that Richardson was carrying an unborn child. The warrant is charging Judge with two counts of murder, two counts of intentional homicide of a fetus, and one count of attempted murder. Herman Glass, a friend of Richardson, was shot in the shoulder during a dispute. Police say Richardson and Judge were formerly dating. Richardson died of her injuries at Mercy Center Hospital yesterday. Glass was treated and released. A tentative agreement has been reached between the Naperville School District and its teachers. School will start for Naperville 203 students this Thursday, just like the calendar says. After several meetings with Federal Mediator, the two sides have come up with the agreement. Assistant School Superintendent Michael Kaiser says it's a good agreement, an agreement that may not have been made without the assistance of the mediator. Details on that contract agreement are not being released until the school board and the teachers ratify the agreement, which should happen sometime shortly after Labor Day. Kaiser says all sides win the hammered out contract. He feels details will show both teachers and the board exhibits great flexibility. He says creative approaches are being used to meet financial needs. Also, both sides want to form committees that will work through the terms of the contract so that the next session of bargaining will find a solution sooner than this year. Oswego residents turned out in large numbers last night to meet the new school superintendent. 58-year-old Carl Plank comes to Oswego from the Blue Island District with nine years of previous experience as a superintendent. He was greeted at a reception at Eastview Elementary by district residents and parents as well as county and community leaders. Plank says he's met with staff and is looking forward to undertaking the new challenges Oswego's top administrative position will provide. He says the first major task will likely be staff related. That's, that's one of two or three that I would look at and replacing anywhere from 20 to 35 people that may ultimately retire at the end of this year, plus any normal retire uh, not retirement, but resignations and so on, we're going to have from 30 to 40 people probably to replace on the staff. And as we do that, it's important that we have the ability to pick the best people that are available to the school district. 
Plank was hired on unanimous school board vote last month. He's the third Oswego District 308 superintendent in as many years. He says they begin or bringing a sense of stability to the main office will also be the primary point of focus. Two things, it seems to me, just hit you right in the face, and that's stability from the central office. We've had several years of turnover and, and so on. In addition, then, as you think about it, new growth to the community. Um, dealing with additional student growth and not only from the standpoint of instruction but also from facilities, you have to be concerned about where we're headed in the future and how we're going to get there. Plank has been awarded a two-year contract and has this month assumed his full-time position with the district. Village officials in Montgomery are putting the decision whether to proceed with disconnection from the Oswego Library District to the residents. Village trustees last night approved the motion made by Ad Hoc Library Committee Chairman William Keck to put a question on the November ballot, asking residents of Montgomery whether they're happy with what they're getting from the district. Keck says residents have been paying taxes to the district in the hopes of ex an expanded library facility in the village, but the 1,000 square foot facility in a storefront on Douglas Road continues to be the only service village village residents have to the library district. Many residents have come to the village board asking for a change. Currently the Oswego Library District is planning to expand their existing facilities in Oswego. That plan is in the preliminary stages. Registered voters in DeKalb County will have a chance to decide the fate of the county's cooperative extension service. County board last week voted to place a referendum seeking broader based financial support in order for the cooperative extension service to carry on into the 21st century. As it is, the smallest percentage of the extension service budget comes from county support, while state monies are largely used to pay salaries or to match local funds. Federal dollars primarily are used for paying personnel or specific programs in the CES budget. Illinois ranks near the bottom of the top 10 agricultural states in terms of state and local financial support of the CES. The alternatives for bettering those figures are to cut salaries and staff personnel. In the referendum, the CES revitalization plan calls for local funding to provide half of the core salary base and half of the funding services at the extension office. The other half will be funded by matching state funds dollar for dollar. County board member James Forrester says there are a large amount of money that can be raised by the tax. We're asking for three tenths of one percent. <clears throat> which is a very small amount, but uh, one-tenth of one percent uh, levy against the uh, valuation that we have in the county would raise about $75,000. If the goal is reached, according to Forrester, the DeKalb County Cooperative Extension Service could acquire $150,000 if the state matched those local funds generated by approval of the referendum. Forrester says a referendum is not a new idea, but one that stabilizes the future of the extension for any county. 68 counties have already passed the resolution, uh, <clears throat> mainly because they had to do it right away because they couldn't find local funding as we have for the last two years. So uh, 68 counties have already approved it. The DeKalb County Center is one of 21 regional centers across the state and serves DeKalb, Kendall, Kane, and McHenry counties. Elgin officials are waiting for word from the Illinois Gaming Board on their riverboat proposal. That story next as the TV30 News continues. I'm Pam Nelson. Join me tonight at 10.30 for Fox Valley Today. Chris Green and Marcia Spock of Blackberry Farm will be our guests. Their beautiful park has attractions for the entire family, and we'll show you some video clips of the park. And tomorrow, John Guile, a children's storybook author and public speaker, will be here to address the use of language in our school system. Join me tonight at 10.30 on Fox Valley Today. Here on TV 30, the Fox Valley's TV station. You want to have some fun? Some California fun? Then order the Aquasling from Riva Sport and let the fun fly. The Aquasling water balloon slingshot is just plain fun. Fun on the run and fun in the sun. The Aquasling can launch a water balloon the length of a football field. Or double that with a 200-yard competition model. The Aquasling is made in America and designed to last. 
It's easily used by one, two, or three people, and it comes with a lifetime guarantee. With your AquaSling, you get 72 biodegradable balloons, the Garden Hose Fill Nozzle, official AquaSling target, and detailed instructions on its, uh, proper use. Just call 1-800-544-7900. That's 1-800-544-7900. Have your credit card ready and we can ship it to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's right. You could be having California fun in just a few days. The AquaSling costs a mere $19.95. So what are you waiting for? Order your California fun today. State Gaming Board officials say a decision could come tomorrow on who will get the state's final riverboat gaming license. The Illinois Gaming Board spent all day yesterday hearing from the four groups vying for the final gaming license. Linda McCahey, the spokeswoman for the board, says that they will lay the testimony with specific criteria in mind. If members put more emphasis on economic development, Elgin and Moline would benefit because both are suffering from high unemployment rates. However, the two rural sites, one in Kane County, the other in Lake, say they are best candidates because their facilities are more apt to draw the greater number from out-of-state gamblers. A 16-year-old Aurora boy is in critical condition tonight after he fell from the back of a pickup truck on Bittler Road. Police say Eldridge Slug of the 2600 block of Stanton Court reportedly fell out of the back of the truck while it was traveling just west of the DuPage Parkway shortly after midnight last night. Police say they believe he and another passenger were horse playing when the teen lost his balance. Police say Slug was pronounced brain dead upon arrival at Mercy Center Hospital. Doctors are reportedly keeping the boy on life support at the center. Well, several planning commission members in the city of Plano have introduced an idea to the city council on forming a nonprofit economic development corporation of the greater Plano area. Four members of the commission submitted their resignations effective September 30th, saying that they could better provide community leadership by forming a, co a corporation. The announcement came as a surprise to Mayor Sue Nesson, who says she knew nothing about the development or corporation. Nesson did say, though, that if a corporation of that type would bring in growth and new development to the community, then the corporation would be a welcome asset. However, Nesson did say the corporation would have no direct ties to the city, but would be working for the good of the community. Plano City Advising Consultants seem to feel that Phase 2 of the city's comprehensive plan is ready for a public hearing. A letter was brought before the council from Tesca Associates asking for payment, saying that it is time for public comment on that portion of the new comprehensive plan. Alderman Dave Williams is a member of the city's planning and zoning committee. Sue received correspondence with uh, Tesca today, and they're, they're ready to go on our comprehensive plan corrections, and uh, I think we're going to be meeting with them in the near future for... Uh, updating the comprehensive plan, the second phase of it. A meeting has been planned at the Planning and Zoning Committee next month, according to Williams, to mull over suggested changes in the comprehensive plan presented by TESCA. We're going to be looking into a, a 29 or 30 page document that was presented to us by TESCA uh, for recommendations and changes in, in, in the uh, building and zoning code. Of, uh, so we're going to go, be reviewing that. We've had it for quite some time. We've been sitting on it. We're going to review it page by page and see if we can come up with some of it and implement it in the cold and reorganize some, some areas in the cold that are causing a little confusion and clean, just basically clean up the cold in some areas. That meeting of the Planning and Zoning Committee is scheduled for September 15th. Legislative leaders gathered at the state capitol to discuss the possibility of a special legislative session to bail out the Chicago schools. Lawmakers are counting on the teachers union and school boards to come to an agreement on a contract talk before the state will step in. House Speaker Michael Madigan wants the legislative leaders, the governor, Mayor Daley, and the board and union to sit down and hash out a compromise. However, Governor Edgar says he's not in favor of doing that. Well, DuPage County State's Attorney Jim Ryan has entered the race for Illinois Attorney General yesterday, saying there needs to be more prosecution of consumer fraud in criminal courts rather than civil suits that George Ryan and Roland Burris favor. Ryan says consumer fraud is a crime and should be prosecuted in the proper case. He also says that he will place more emphasis on prosecuting consumer fraud as well as filing civil suits. Ryan, in his third term as DuPage County State's Attorney, lost the race for Attorney General to Roland Burris. 
Reforming Illinois Child's Protection System is one step closer to reality under a Barb Heideson investigation headed by State Representative Tom Cross of Oswego. Cross said the subcommittee, which is part of the House Judiciary One Committee, has completed a big first step by finishing a comprehensive on-site investigation in the East St. Louis area. The subcommittee opened their statewide investigation by meeting with Metro East doctors, nurses, police, officers, teachers, juvenile officers, and social workers after the meeting. The group also toured schools and shelters for neglected children and spent several hours ta talking to the DCFS volunteers. The subcommittee plans to travel to Rockford, Aurora, and Chicago for further on-site investigations. Well, high school golf is underway across the entire Fox Valley. We'll have sports coming up next. Imagine the luxury of being able to sit anywhere, anytime. Now you can with Sports Seat. It's that simple. Sports Seat is a durable, lightweight walking stick that gets you where you want to go. Sports Seat's unique pistol grip handle is safe and functional. Just unfold it, and it's a sturdy, comfortable seat. Sports Seat guarantees you a seat for any activity golfing, camping, travel, virtually any spectator event. Use it at work or at play, for the family or for yourself. Sports Seat makes a great gift. Just think of the possibilities. Sports Seat is strong. It's patented rugged design holds up to 250 pounds, yet it weighs only 28 ounces. Guaranteed for a year. Use it for a lifetime. Sports Seat. Only $19.95 Visa or MasterCard. Call 1-800-351-8100 now for a special limited time offer. That's 1-800-351-8100. Or send check or money order plus $4.50 shipping and handling to Sports Seat. Big odors lurk in small places. Stick it to big odors linger in small places. Stick it to them with Concentrated air wick stick up stop big odors in small places. Air wick stick up. Stick it to them. You ever notice you can't really smell your own breath? Hi, Tim. Whoa. Problem, Tim? Whoa. You can smell other people's breath. Whoa. But not your own, even though it's right under your nose. So you search for fresh, clean breath or face the consequences. Hey, guys. Want fresh, clean breath? Get the only mint with Retson and be certain with certs. Rub-a-dub-dub, pretend you're a tub with a bad case of soap scum. Wouldn't you like to be cleaned by soft scrub with Clorox bleach? Clean soap scum safely without harsh scratching. Soft scrub with bleach and soft scrub cleanser, preferred by tubs everywhere. Aurora University's football squad will be holding their annual media day this coming Saturday, and it'll give the public a chance to take a look at the 1993 Spartan squad. And with the success of last year's team, this year's group will try to write their own chapter in the Spartan record book. And if preseason rankings are correct, head coach Jim Scott could have another great year. Certainly, uh, what I have told the squad is basically uh, it, it is recognition of past achievements and, uh, and potential for the future. Doesn't win any games for you, but it's nice to be recognized. And I think in, the, in our brief history at Aurora University, uh, this is the first time of the preseason that we have been rated. So we consider it a real honor, but on the other hand, it uh, is an awesome responsibility to live up to these clippings. Aurora has been ranked as high as 16th and as low as 18th in three different preseason polls. The inter-squad game will begin around 1 o'clock Saturday. It's open to the public and is free of charge. Well, high school golfers are getting set for the new season, and one of the local teams that could make a bid for the state title is Elgin Larkin High School. The Royals were the surprise team in 1992, edging St. Charles in the sectional to help end the Saints' streak of consecutive state tournament appearances at 9. A couple of players to watch from Larkin are seniors Harry Channon, who qualified for the Max Fly PGA Junior Championship next week, this in Pinehurst, North Carolina, and Sean Roeder, who is third in the junior division IJGA Player of the Year standings. Naperville North and Wabansi Valley are two other teams locally that should be strong this year. On the girls' side of things, St. Charles' St. tradition will continue there. Coach Rod Osborne says the seniors on his team are exceptional. 
Megan Morgan tied for third in the state last year. Ashley Webb and Megan Luzinger have taken the Saints to fourth and second place finishes in the state meet over the last two years. Well, Naperville North has a lot of young talent on their squad, and Coach Ed Rosenthal's top two players are junior Jillian Sitter and sophomore Kelly Clark. They should be tough as well. Speaking of golf, the Orchard Valley Club Championship in Aurora was won over the weekend by Todd Brummel, who needed two playoff holes to defeat Tom Rank. After 36 holes, both had carded scores of 149. Brummel then parred the first and second holes, while Rank had a double bogey on the second playoff hole. Back to football fields where in DeKalb, NIU has sustained some injuries on their offensive line. Both guard Joe Patterson and tackle Matt Clarkson are going to miss the first three to six weeks due to some knee injuries. Roland Terrell and Timmy Lewis will take their places. In the meantime, sophomore wide receiver Otha Brooks' status for the opener on September 2nd at Iowa State is also doubtful. Now, Brooks is one of the fastest players on the team. He has a hamstring injury. Northwestern and Notre Dame fans will get together in Chicago starting in 1994. One of Gene Sullivan's last acts as executive with the Chicago Park District was to contract for a game to be played at Soldier Field. Chicago Tribune reported today that a press conference will be held later this week to make the official announcement. Sullivan also began negotiations that could make Soldier Field the site of the Northern Illinois Illinois game in 1994 and the U of I Northwestern games in 1995 and 96. Stan Thomas, a former Chicago Bear number one draft choice who wanted out of the Windy City earlier in the preseason, well, he got his wish, as you remember. He was shipped off to Atlanta. Well, now he is without a ball club. The Falcons cut Thomas Monday as the team's trim toward today's roster limit of 60. A couple of former Fighting Illini players were cut yesterday as well. Falcons also cut running back Keith Jones, who had been with them for the past few seasons. And also in Miami, the Dolphins cut rookie fullback Camino Bell. After last night's 20-14 loss to the Saints in New Orleans, the Bears will be right back on the field on Friday night when they take on the Dallas Cowboys at Soldier Field. Loss last night keeps the Bears winless in preseason. Only other teams who have not won in preseason play are the New York Jets, the Los Angeles Rams, and the Green Bay Packers. And finally, Chicago White Sox pitcher Jack McDowell has been named the American League Player of the Week. While on the basketball court, former Chicago Bull Craig Hodges has signed a contract to play next season in Italy. That's a look at sports. We'll have the forecast coming up in a minute. In the next 60 seconds, as you watch, a powerful new air cleaner, the Zephyr Turbo Ionizer, will completely clear the smoke from the sealed container. The Zephyr Air Ionizer works by silently emitting millions of negatively charged ions into the air. These ions cling to airborne pollutants like dust, tobacco smoke, mold, pollen, even bacteria and viruses, causing them to fall harmlessly to the ground. And the Zephyr removes odors, too. Zephyr's new turbo ionizer technology is so effective, the U.S. Navy uses it to clean the air in submarines. A Zephyr Air Ionizer is the best way to clean air. Use the Zephyr in your home, at the office, in your baby's nursery, anywhere you want clean, fresh air and with a free 12 volt adapter the zephyr ionizer cleans the air in your car or rv too to order a zephyr air ionizer for just 39.95 have your credit card ready and call this toll-free number then after 30 days if you don't agree that the air you breathe is cleaner and fresher return it for a full refund order now and start breathing air this clean Almost. And it's all yours. You think he can do it? Lipton Original. You can't wait to guzzle, gulp it, chug it. It ain't hip to sip. Lipton Original. This ain't no sipping tea. It happened at the Ponds Institute. The discovery of Nourishing Complex 7. The miracle behind Pond's new Nourishing Moisturizer Lotion. A moisturizer so advanced, it adds more effective moisture than the leading moisturizer. It reduces the appearance of fine lines by 20%. And it is oil-free. Pond's new Nourishing Moisturizer. For more information, call the Institute at 1-800-34-PONDS. 
Komatsu, Fiat, Hitachi, VME. They're a part of life in Illinois today, just like baseball, marching bands, and Caterpillar. Why? Because we have to compete with them around the world, and we have to be competitive to win. Because when Caterpillar succeeds around the world, life is richer for our people here at home. It appears the rain has ended for the next few days anyway. Here's Larry with the forecast. A hot, humid day around the Fox Valley, and it's going to get worse by tomorrow. Good evening, Larry Nelson with a look at that weather. Well, as you can see by our forecast map, frontal system has pretty much moved through the Fox Valley area. Did not bring much relief. A lot of rain last night, even some sightings of tornadoes. Finally, everyone's power has been restored. But we have another frontal system coming at us from the Pacific Northwest. Temperatures will cool behind it. However, by Thursday night, we could see a repeat performance of last night. Tomorrow, though, that high-pressure system in the plains will roll in here, bringing with it hotter temperatures and even more humid conditions as the wind will switch to the south-southwest throughout the Fox Valley. Well, today we saw a high temperature here in the Fox Valley of 88 degrees, most of the deep south into the 90s with heat indexes over 100 degrees. Still cool temperatures, however, in the Pacific Northwest. Tonight's low is going to be very chilly in the Pacific Northwest with overnight lows down into the lower 30s in places. And we find here in the Fox Valley will drop down to around 65 to 68 degrees as an overnight low. Lower Mississippi Valley, Gulf Coast region, well into the 70s, mid to upper 70s tonight as a low temperature. Extended forecast through the 28th of the month, we find that temperatures will be averaging above normal, anywhere from 5 to 8 degrees above normal here in northern Illinois in the Fox Valley region. Meanwhile, the Pacific Northwest will have temperatures below normal for the period. In precipitation, look for above normal precip here in the Fox Valley and much of the upper Mississippi Valley region as well as New England and the deep southeast, while well, the west coast will continue as it has for a while now with uh, below normal precipitation. And look at Texas. They're also talking about below normal precipitation, a real drought condition that's been shaping up all summer long for those folks. Well, taking a look at that forecast for tonight for the Fox Valley region, the TV30 viewing area, partly cloudy skies, wind shifting from the west to the southwest, and they'll be around 5 to 10 miles an hour with an overnight low, about 68 or so. Then tomorrow, a partly sunny day, very much on the humid side with a high about 92 and a heat index maybe touching 100. So take care if you have outside activities to do. By tomorrow night, increasing clouds, mild overnight low, 65. And then for Thursday, a partly cloudy day, but showers roll in as that next frontal system comes through in the afternoon. We'll have a high about 90, but uh, we could have a repeat performance again of things like happened last night around the valley. Friday during the day will be a sunny day, a general cool down, 84 is a high. Could have some early morning showers on Friday. Saturday partly cloudy, 81 is a high, and uh, Sunday will be about the same. Today's high 88, last night's low 69, only 11 hundredths of an inch of precip here in uh, Broadcast Center last night, although both north and south of us had substantially more up in McHenry County over an inch the same can be said for the folks south in Grundy, Will, and Livingston County over an inch of precipitation last evening. 6.10 for sunrise tomorrow morning, 7.37 p.m. sunset. Normally at this time of the year, 81 the high, 61 the low. There you have it. That's how the weather shapes up on a Tuesday evening. You have a good one. Thank you, Larry. Well, if the check had been for anything but a tax refund, Jennifer Mayo Demon of Wilkinsboro, Pennsylvania, might not have been that surprised when the bank bounced it. But there was a notice to Mayo Demon and her husband, Sereth Demon, that their $609.41 check had been returned to the U.S. Treasury Department because of insufficient funds. I thought the government really must be in the red, said Mayo Demon. A couple said that they had been given assurances they'll get their money, though they haven't been able to find out why the check bounced. And that's our report for this Tuesday, August 24th. I'm Dean Abbott. And I'm Sarah Turnus. From all of us at TV30 News, good night.
Hi, I'm Paul Buck, your local giant. Sarah Chernus. It's Wednesday, August 25th. And in news headlines tonight, authorities are looking into a fatal car train collision in DeKalb County, at the, and the Marywood Fire Protection District will remain intact for at least two more years. Oswego's new school superintendent has some very definite opinions on the issue of state funding of schools, and dozens of local residents have filed petitions to run for local school boards. We'll have these and other stories coming up tonight on TV 30 News. You want to have some fun? Some California fun? Then order the Aqua Sling from Riva Sport and let the fun fly. The Aqua Sling water balloon slingshot is just plain fun. Fun on the run and fun in the sun. The Aqua Sling can launch a water balloon the length of a football field or double that with a 200 yard competition model. The Aqua Sling is made in America and designed to last. It's easily used by one, two, or three people and it comes with a lifetime guarantee. With your Aqua Sling, you get 72 biodegradable balloons, the garden hose fill nozzle, official Aqua Sling target, and detailed instructions on its uh, proper use. Just call 1 800 544 7900. That's 1 800 544 7900. Have your credit card ready and we can ship it to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's right. You can be having California fun in just a few days. The Aqua Sling costs a mere $19.95. So what are you waiting for? Order your California fun today. If you always look backwards, you'll never see where you're headed. At Caterpillar, we're working to build better jobs with more security for the next generation of hometown workers. But we all have to work together to make that kind of tomorrow a reality. After all, if you're too busy holding on to the past, you won't be able to reach out to the future. A Chicago man died yesterday in a car train accident near the Governor Beverage facility just south of Route 30 in DeKalb County. Sheriff's deputies say a car driven by 33-year-old David Cushman was southbound on Governor Beverage Drive when it entered a railway crossing and was struck by a westbound Burlington Northern train. Deputies say Cushman's vehicle was pushed nine-tenths of a mile before the train came to a stop. Deputies say the collision caused Cushman to be killed instantly. Aurora City Council members have added to their consent agenda a plan recommended by a finance committee to hold off on another further action to bring the Marywood Fire Protection District until at least 1995. Alderman last night discussed the plan with Fire Protection District Attorney Bernie Wheeler. Wheeler told the council a pumper was being tested to determine whether it had the capability of pushing 1,250 gallons of water per minute, which are Aurora standards. The truck is part of a donation to the city for the proposed fire station. Alderman Bob O'Connor explained after about two months of uh, discussion, the agreement has been reached with the Marywood Fire Protection District that, in effect, they will exist as a district for a continued two-year period, but that in recognition of the planning that's being done by the city in regard to station number nine out on Molitor, uh, and as a result of some long-term planning, that in two years' period, uh, they will, in effect, go out of business. They will not object. Uh, to uh, a city's proposal to uh, take over the responsibility that they presently have. And as part of the agreement over the two-year period, uh, the city uh, will receive from the Marywood Fire Protection District a dollar amount, approximately, I think, $60,000 a year, leaving them $100,000 to operate for their area that they'll continue to operate under. And additionally, the Marywood Fire District will provide to the city a piece of equipment that they presently have in recognition of some additional responsibilities that the city's going to have in, in 
providing fire protection for the area up there. Representatives of the Fire Protection District say they will not pursue a lawsuit when the city begins its annexation procedures in two years as part of the agreement. Large number of Montgomery residents turned out at this week's board meeting to protest village approval of a plan that would allow an apartment complex along Jericho Road at the intersection of Orchard Road. In a drawn-out debate, lawyers representing both the developers and the residents and the taxpayers themselves were allowed comments on the proposal. Currently, M1 zoning exists in the subject area for manufacturing. The plan calls for a variety of uses, B3 designation for a possible service station, B2 general commercial, where a strip mall could be, re uh, be developed, and R4 residential zoning. Developer's attorney Tim McCann told trustees a large amount of residences could be built in that area, but the developers would adjust the number of developments to suit the board. As for the parcel we are depicting as parcel one, consisting of 10.485 acres more or less, is what we are requesting our four zone. Now that is uh, the zoning that would allow under your ordinance up to 11 units per acre. That we recommended or we asked the plan commission to discuss 11 units per acre. But when we received their unanimous approval, it was based on 11 dwelling units per acre. We have reviewed the annexation agreement in this case. We know that the council has previously said that if R4 or if residential is requested, that we would be limited to eight dwelling units per acre. If the pleasure of the council is that we stick with eight dwelling units per acre, we would agree with that. We certainly would prefer to have more, but if you would prefer to stick with the eight that's required under the annexation agreement, we can live with that as well. Over 200 signatures in petition form were handed over to the board, requesting they deny the apartment complex proposal. Resident Terry Bennett offered the board his reasoning. The kids uh, will have no place to play. Are they going to go out and play in the gas station and the with the other businesses there? That would be creating a problem. But my point uh, also is uh, the police. We're going to burden the police department on Montgomery also. So the simple fact, apartment complexes, when you stick people together like this, they have nothing to do. Get run. The police are called. It's going to burden the tax body there. The board voted unanimously not to grant the R4 zoning to the developer, but did approve a B3 and B2 proposal. Kendall County Plan Commission members are tonight discussing a proposal for Kendall County's first corporate-owned and operated composting facility. Representatives of O.M. Scott Company earlier this month appeared before the Bristol Township Plan Commission with a proposal for a year waste composting facility at the corner of Galena and Beecher Roads. Dozens of area residents turned out to express their concerns about truck traffic, noise, and of course odor, which had proven to be a problem at some other composting facilities in northern Illinois. The Township Plan Commission split their vote down the middle, so we'll have technically passed the matter on to county planners without positive or negative recommendation. Following tonight's vote, the matter will go back to the Township Board, then on to the County Building and to the Zoning Committee. The DuPage County Board has added additional expenditures to complete the addition of the County Jail. Board members yesterday issued an amendment to the contract of White & Company for additional architectural services and extensions of the on-site observer in the amount of $98,000. The addition brings a new contract to a cost of just over $4.1 million, which under the amount budgeted for the project. The change order for White & Company will provide for additional acoustics at a cost of $8,000, while $90,000 will go toward on-site observer fees. The observer will be a full-time worker, providing protection to the county against deficiencies in work. The company has agreed to provide the observer for 60 days after the county accepts the building. He says 20 jobs will be added this year for additional guard and sheriff's personnel for the transition of the new building, while 30 similar positions will be added next year, and another 85 or so additional jobs by 1996. A vehicle allegedly taken from a Fox Valley camp for the disabled is found following a car chase that ends in Iowa. Kendall County Sheriff deputies received a call from Genesco Police checking for a stolen vehicle report from that area. The vehicle was traced to an address on Fox Road in Yorkville. According to the report, Sheriff's deputies went to the address to see if the car owner was noticing the car missing. Deputies say the car belongs to Robert Fries, who told the reporting officer he wasn't sure of the whereabouts of his 1989 Dodge van. It appeared that the van was taken sometime during the night from a parking area in front of his home. Iowa police advised the deputies that the two juveniles had reportedly taken the van from North Aurora and had run away from home. The chase allegedly ended on the Iowa side of the Mississippi River, where a road 
roadblock was set up. According to the report, the van was severely damaged when the juvenile driver tried to break through the roadblock. The two were taken into custody and, were be, and are being charged in Iowa since the chase ended there. Well, a Fox Valley superintendent says that state should find a way to make school funding more equitable. That story in just a moment. Small places. Stick it to them with stick ups. Big odors linger in small places. Stick it to them with stick ups. Concentrated air wick stick ups stop big odors in small places. Air wick stick ups. Stick it to them. You ever notice you can't really smell your own breath? Hi, Tim. Whoa. Problem, Tim? Whoa. You can smell other people's breath. Whoa. Whoa. But not your own, even though it's right under your nose. Whoa. So you search for fresh, clean breath or face the consequences. Hey, guys. Oh! Want fresh, clean breath? Get the only mint with Retson and be certain with certs. Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, pretend you're a tub with a bad case of soap scum. Wouldn't you like to be cleaned by soft scrub with Clorox bleach? Clean soap scum safely without harsh scratching. Soft scrub with bleach and soft scrub cleanser, preferred by tubs everywhere. Hi, I'm Pam Nelson. Join me tonight at 6.30 on Fox Valley Today. John Guile, a children's storybook author and public speaker, will be here to address the language crisis in America and stress the importance of reading and writing at home and in the classroom. And tomorrow, do you need a day away from the active role of raising children? Well, Therese Green will be here to tell us about Mother's Day Away, a different approach to daycare. And Joe Lighty will have a look at Fox Valley Theater. Join me tonight at 6.30 for Fox Fox Valley Today, here on TV 30, the Fox Valley's TV station. Oswego's new superintendent of schools has some definite opinions on the state's role in funding education. The issue has come to a head in recent months with Chicago schools' dilemma of coming up with at least $1.5 million if city public schools are to open this fall. While Chicago city and school officials have been pushing Governor Edgar to call a special legislative session to discuss the matter, Senate President James Pate Phillips says he would want to include it in that discussion the possibility of shifting the school funding burden from property tax to income tax. Oswego District 308's new superintendent, Dr. Carl Plank, says he thinks that such a shift should be considered very seriously. I think schools ultimately have to get off the property tax system. At least they have to take the emphasis off the property tax system. I guess I'll be surprised if in my lifetime we're not dependent on uh, the property tax in, um, in the main, but if we take the emphasis off of it that's on it now, that could be uh, where we're headed. At least in the short term, that ought to be where we're headed. Plank says he feels the main goal should be to foster greater equity in funding of Illinois schools. Well, I, I think as you get at it, you have to talk about equity in school funding. You know, the ability of some schools to spend three, four, five times as much as others makes a tremendous amount of difference in what they're able to deliver to, their, to our kids. And if you're the state legislature, it's like you're the State Board of Education. You're responsible for all those kids, and the system you've put together today just isn't equitable to all of them. After several days of discussions between governor and state legislative leaders, the governor declined to call a special session to discuss Mayor Daley's Riverboat Casino bailout plan. Mayor Daley continues to propose alternative measures in the waning days before the school term is supposed to start. Bud Herbick will seek re-election to the East Aurora School Board this fall. He is among five candidates vying for three openings in the school district. He will oppose incumbent Anna Trotter and first-time filers Frida Rietmeyer, Everett Best, and Juanita Wells. For the West Aurora School Board, incumbents Mary Bernard and Gail Ershing will face Keith Trebone and Reverend Kenneth Davis for three positions opening on that board. 
Monday was a deadline for petitions for school board hopefuls in Kendall County. Plano school board hopefuls vying for three four-year terms are incumbents Ruth Ann Allen and Red Corn. Two others have filed, Lester J. Schooneman Jr. and Barbara Verbo. In Yorkville, four incumbents are vying for four openings. Robert Pilmer, Norm Watkins, Steve Gangler, and Gail Degatti have all met the deadline. Seven have filed for four positions in the Oswego School District. The incumbents Michael F. Becker and Jane Thorson along with board seekers Randy Thompson, Leland Hoffer, Roger C. Clark Jr., Gary Tollickson, and Dennis Lee McGinn. They've all filed their attentions. In the DeKalb County area, six filers are seeking three positions on the board. John Frieders and Dave Stahl, incumbents, and Jackie Johnson, Jay Rudd, Barbara Lures, and Bruce Berigree will face each other in the fall. Three incumbents and another filer will fill openings for the four four-year terms in the Scominock School District. They are Doug Stahl. Anna Lawrence, Barb Tuttle, and Dean Lundeen. School board elections are held November 2nd as part of the general election. An Aurora teen pronounced brain dead following a fall from a pickup truck this week remains on life support this evening at Mercy Center Hospital. 16-year-old Eldred Slug reportedly fell out of the back of the truck while it was traveling near the DuPage Parkway. Police say they suspect the fall was the result of horseplay in the open truck bed between Slug and another teen. Slug remains on the critical list this evening, according to Mercy Center spokesman. If you're considering building a new fence on your property in Plano, you'd better double check the applicable ordinances. The change has been made to Plano's ordinance governing fencing on private property. Following this week's city council meeting, Dave Williams, a member of the city's building and zoning committee, explained why. We changed this for two reasons. Uh, first reason, our building inspector was running into problems. It's uh, pretty. It was easy for people to get a four foot height fence. But when it came to five feet, they were having problems. Uh, not many manufacturers stock it in, in five feet. They stock more in six feet. And second uh, reason, it, it also allows the uh, homeowner a little more privacy if they can go from uh, five feet to six feet. An allowance of an additional four inches was made, according to Williams. The, the six feet four inches is, is basically just to allow for uneven and land that is, is uh, sloping a little bit. Uh, Naturally, if you have a six-foot high fence, unless you put it directly on, on the ground, you're, you're, you know, it's going to be a little higher than six feet. So that was basically re the four-inch difference there. The ordinance changes take effect immediately. There's a new trustee on the Joliet Junior College Board. Leonard L. Hodgman of Joliet has been selected from 12 candidates who submitted applications for the open board seat. Hodgman, an adjunct faculty member at Lewis University, retired from JJC in 1989, where he taught for 32 years. He will be sworn in and seated at the board's August 30th meeting and will serve until November of 1995 filing an unexpired term of James Wright of Bolingbroke, who has resigned on July 12th, citing professional reasons. Well, a high school golfer takes home the top honors this week at Naperville. Dave Allstott has sports coming up next. the biggest, it's the best, it's the fun-filled family place in town. It's Funway Entertainment Center in Batavia, located off Route 25, just off the Fox Valley Bike Trail. Try your hand at miniature golf, step up to the baseball and softball batting cages, take to the wheel of the competitive skid cars, or bump your way around in bumper cars. The new attraction everyone will be challenging, the Crazy Maze, or the state-of-the-art sound and climate-conditioned roller skating. It's always a big hit. Come spin your wheels at Funway Entertainment Center, Route 25 in Batavia. Getting there is all the fun. there, Bo. Almost. And it's all yours. You think he can do it? <laughs> Lipton Original. You can't wait to guzzle, gulp it, chug it. It ain't hip to sip. Lipton Original. This ain't no sipping tea. It happened at the Ponds Institute. The discovery of Nourishing Complex 7. The miracle behind Pond's new Nourishing Moisturizer Lotion. A moisturizer so advanced, it adds more effective moisture than the leading moisturizer. It reduces the appearance of fine lines by 20%. And it is oil-free. 
Ron's new nourishing moisturizer. For more information, call the Institute at 1-800-34-PONDS. Well, Chris Peterson of the Oswego High School golf team captured the individual medalist at the Naperville Central Invitational by carding a five over par 77. Josh Neifer from Naperville Central finished second, one stroke behind the lead, while Jason Lamastri of Wabatsi Valley and Curtis Malm tied for third with a 79. Team honors went to host Naperville Central with a three-stroke advantage over Wabatsi Valley. St. Charles finished seven strokes behind the leaders for third place. Well, Susie Starrett, a 1991 graduate of Aurora Christian, finished in fifth place in the Southwest Airlines National Collegiate Invitational Tennis Tournament in Austin, Texas. Starrett lost in the quarterfinals to Kellyanne Johnston of Duke. She's the number nine ranked collegiate player in the nation. And in the consolation bracket, she finished uh, longtime rival Jennifer Nazer from Arlington Heights. Nazer plays for the University of Texas. Starrett took second place in her state her senior year at Aurora Christian. While two area sports boosters clubs plan on conducting a membership drive for their local high schools. Sandwich High School Sports Boosters membership drive will be taking place from 5.30 to dark. High school athletes will be going door to door to sign up new members. And memberships are $5. And the Plano Sports Boosters will also be conducting their membership drive. Members of the volleyball and football teams will begin uh, convesting Plano Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Memberships are $5 as well. Well, the Chicago Bears reduced their roster to 60 players by placing 12 players on waivers, and they also put Tom Thayer on the physically unable to perform list. Among those released were Shane Matthews, a quarterback from Florida, and Lewis Age, a second-year tackle, and cornerback Richard Fain. The Bears had signed Fain as a, as a Plan B free agent and had started the last seven games for the Bears. And Jay Hilgenberg, 11-year center for the Bears, was released by the Cleveland Browns. Well, in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, last year's Little League World Series champion Long Beach defeated champ, uh, Richmond 12-8 and Bedford shut out Hamilton 1-0. Long Beach was named last year's champ after the Philippines were disqualified for using ineligible players. And this year's tourney is not without controversy, as Taiwan was disqualified for the same reason. Saipan, Saipan became the Far East champ by default, but was defeated by Panama yesterday 4-1. to one. And also in the international bracket, Vancouver beat Germany 8-1. to one. The championship game for the U.S. division and the international division brackets are scheduled for tomorrow with the Little League World Series champion to be crowned Saturday. Well, the Durham Bull may be able to do something that sports fans have not been able to get for Nellie Fox, and that's to go to the Hall of Fame. The wooden bull that graces the right field fence at Durham Athletic Park was built for the movie Bull Durham and was meant to only last for the making of the movie but it's become a landmark. With the closing of the park called DAP, Hall of Fame officials want to induct the bull as a tribute to movies made about baseball. Well, move over Lou Gehrig and Cal Ripken and don't even think about a continuous game streak. The clown prince of baseball, Max Patkin, has not missed a minor league appearance in 50 years. Well, that comes to over 4,000 consecutive games. Well, last Wednesday, Packin, while visiting a friend at Fenway Park in Boston, missed a step in the dugout and severely sprained his ankle. The clown prince will be on the DL for about three weeks. And that's a look at sports, Sarah. Hot and muggy weather are still in the forecast, plus there's some rainfall mixed in. The forecast is coming up next. Ice cream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. <clears throat> we all scream for ice cream. Yeah! Thank you. Hershey's chocolate syrup. Question is, how can you make all those foods you love in a way you can feel better about? Chef Bert Wolf. Here's one good answer. 90% unsaturated Crisco oil. You see, when you're cooking with oil, you want to cut back unsaturated fat. Compared to olive or corn oil, Crisco is lower in saturated fat. Crisco looks light. And there's no heavy oily taste. Mmm. When you make what you love, make it smarter. Make it with Crisco. Cooks who know, trust Crisco. Where will you be when you're...
your laxative starts working, where will you be? With Fleet brand glycerin suppositories, there's no worry. Fleet works when you want it to, in minutes. For fast, predictable relief, trust Fleet. It's predictable. Well, it was another hot and humid summer-like day in the Fox Valley, and more is on the way, but Larry says some added rainfall could be on the way as well, as he joins us with the forecast. An overcast, hot, and humid day around the Fox Valley. Good afternoon. Good evening. Larry Nelson is late afternoon here in the 6 o'clock report. It, it is hot and steamy again outside today, and that uh, steamy weather is going to be with us for a while, but then starting tomorrow, we move into the chance of showers. As a matter of fact, actually tonight there's a chance of showers, but tomorrow's going to be another hot and very humid, sticky day with a high about 92. Tomorrow night is when I see the strong possibility of that frontal system coming through that you see on our forecast map and creating some shower activity and maybe even some gusty winds. Again, on Friday, some more showers, but temperatures dropping down into the 80s, and uh, we find that uh, temperatures out on Saturday could be as low as only 75 to 77 degrees as a high. Well, just how warm was it today around the valley? Well, we warmed up today to a high of 93 degrees, and uh, many areas to the, um, to the south of us were well over 98 degrees with heat indexes well, running well over 100 degrees. Look at that. The 90-degree area actually runs through northern Illinois and way up into parts of northern Michigan and the UP, while parts of central Illinois today were actually cooler than we are here in the Fox Valley. Taking a look at overnight lows for this evening, we find that we'll drop down to an overnight low right around 69 to 70 degrees. Uh, most of the nation is in general chilling down quite a bit. We find 70s pretty well confined to the lower Mississippi Valley and the Gulf Coast region. Uh, most of the far west down into the 30s even this evening. Look at that. Some of the higher elevations could go down to the freezing mark for tonight. Extended forecast through September 2nd, we continue in that trend with temperatures averaging above normal here for the Fox Valley, anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above normal with the Pacific Northwest in the cool spree that they've been having, temperatures well below normal up there. Precipitation from now through the 2nd of September is uh, supposed to continue to average above normal here for the Fox Valley region. We find also most of the upper Midwest and Florida, along with New England, will have above normal precipitation. The West Coast continues in a dry down spell, as do people down in Texas. In Texas, they have had uh, some gosh awful dry weather and real high heat levels and uh, some real crop failure problems down there. Taking a look at the forecast for the Fox Valley, partly cloudy, warm and humid, with light southeast winds and an overnight low, probably right around 70 degrees or so. A uh, chance of those showers creeping in is uh, just a possibility tonight. Tomorrow, a 30% chance of showers, partly sunny, hot and humid with a high around 92. It is going to be a, a very miserable type day. By tomorrow night, look for a 40% chance of showers, cooler with an overnight low 65. And then Friday, uh, thunderstorms, 40% likely, cloudy skies, and a high at 84. For your weekend, things start to cool down considerably. 77 is a high on Saturday, and Sunday will have sunny skies, low humidity, and a high at 81 degrees. 93 the high officially today, 65 the low last night at Broadcast Center. And 6.11 for sunrise tomorrow, 7.36 p.m. for sunset. Averages 81 at this time of the year is a high and 61 is a low. That's an early look at the weather. Be back at 10 with more. Dan, thank you, Larry. Gross, Nebraska has a population of less than 10, but that doesn't keep them from joining in summer festival activities. This year, the town's nine residents managed to bring together 3,000 people to celebrate their town's centennial. Festivities included the pancake and sausage breakfast, a parade, and of course the annual Miss Gross contest that included mudware and choreware categories. Event organizers say the celebration was small, but it was definitely gross. And that is our report for Wednesday, August 25th. I'm Dean Abbott. And I'm Sarah Turnus. Have a great night.
Good evening, I'm Dean Abbott. And I'm Sarah Chernus. It's Thursday, August 26th. And in news headlines tonight, Kendall County CPAT officers have confiscated and destroyed over a million dollars in cannabis for the second time this month. And an Aurora girl is hospitalized, an innocent bystander struck by gang fire. Plan for a regional composting facility in Kendall County's Bristol Township is moving through the county review process. State Senator Chris Lawson answered local residents' questions on a number of state issues at a town meeting in Aurora. And there's good news on the local unemployment front. We'll have these and other stories coming up tonight on TV 30 News. is special, other people will too. So use Noxzema every time you wash. It's better than soap. Dissolves oil without over drying for healthy looking skin. Your face belongs to Noxzema. And here's a different kind of Noxzema. Noxzema Plus with an added moisturizer plus a fresh scent for healthy looking skin. Your face belongs to Noxzema. Static can get you off on the wrong foot. It'll stop you. Static can be a real drag. It'll stop you. And static can be an embarrassing slip up. It'll stop you. Yeah. The more you move, the more static can build up. But you can stop static cling with Bounce. Bounce leaves clothes virtually static free. It won't stop you. Bounce stops static before static stops you. Protect your treasured dining room tabletop from burns, scratches, and stains by ordering a deluxe table pad direct from the factory for as low as $29.95. Identical pads are sold at retail for over $100, but order direct and save up to 70%. All pads are fully insulated, available in wood grain or solid color. Fold for easy storage will fit any shape table and carry a factory guarantee of up to 20 years. Call now and receive free table pad samples plus information on how to save up to 70% on your deluxe dining room table pad. Call 1-800-527-6800. That's 1-800-527-6800. CPAT agents in Kendall County confiscated over 3,000 pounds of cannabis yesterday. Agents say the cannabis plants located in remote areas of Kendall County were growing wildly. Agents acting on anonymous tips in the morning cut down about 750 plants, while in the afternoon, an estimated 2,500 pounds of cannabis was chopped for burning. CPAT officials say some plants in the location of the second sweep had been taken by unknown passersby. Officials estimate the street value of the burned plants at $1.5 million. Police are searching for the suspects who shot a 17-year-old Aurora man and injured a 14-year-old girl in what's been called a gang-related incident. Police say Ramondo Galarza of the 1100 block of Indian Avenue was struck in the back, chin, and foot by a drive-by shooter. According to reports, Galarza was in an open area at East New York and Anderson Streets with several friends when a car allegedly full of gang members drove by. One of the passengers fired eight shots at the group in an open lot. Galarza was ported, reported in good condition at Copley Hospital. The teenage girl was struck by a stray bullet that entered her bedroom and struck her in the arm. She was treated and released. Police say they confiscated several 9mm casings from the street. State Gaming Board has made their decision on which Illinois town will get the final riverboat gaming license available. Developers in Elgin have gotten a nod from the board at a decision coming down late Wednesday afternoon. Board members say their decision was based on the merits of the proposal presented by the Hyatt Nevada Landing developers as well as the economic benefit to the community. Kane County board members last week endorsed the Elgin proposal over their competitors, one in rural Kane County, after Elgin developers and members of Kane County's executive committee came to terms on an agreement which would allot about 20% of the riverboat's profits to a special community improvement fund. Estimates place that figure at about $15 million per year. State Senator Chris Lawson met with constituents last night at an Aurora Town meeting at Wabonzi Community College, saying he has a gut feeling Chicago could be granted riverboat gambling licenses. Lawson says if they link the good with the bad to bring the riverboats to Chicago, we could see a case we've seen in the past in state government. If they hook that to the education solution, we've got the lottery all over again. Yeah. Well, hopefully they won't do that, but what happens is we're going to be facing an expansion of gambling in Illinois. And again, it works like, you know, if I can come home with a riverboat for one of my good buddies, man, I'm, I mean, 
think about this. If, if you're running a business that's generating 180 million, this is a point that Rushenberger made, if you're running a business producing $180 million worth of revenue, would you not take 1% of the money to protect where the essence of your business is coming from? It's been a license, it's been granted by the state. Wouldn't you be willing to invest 1% to protect the 180 million? Lawson says in his solution that more emphasis should be put on creating jobs from companies that follow the riverboats to the new communities. Let's put this on a plane of economic development. Some people consider this economic development, but what we need are our environmentally responsible manufacturing businesses. Other major topics of Lawson's town meeting were reducing crime in state and local areas, taxpayer fund wasting, and the pesticide usage law. Well, there was good news for Fox Valley job seekers during the month of July. Unemployment dropped by more than one full point over the month in all area counties. Largest drop was noted in LaSalle County, where joblessness plummeted two and a half points. LaSalle's new 10.4 percent figure is still the highest in the region. Unemployment was down by 1.8% in Grundy and Will counties. Grundy now stands at 10.3, Will at 6.7. Kane County saw a joblessness decline of 1.7% over the month, and Kendall County unemployment was down 1.6%, back to the 5% level for the first time in recent months. Unemployment in DeKalb County was down by 1.4%. They have, however, lost bragging rights to the area's lowest figure to DePage County, down 1.2 tenths over the, uh, the month to 4.7 percent. Unemployment was also down by more than a point and a half in both Aurora and Elgin and Joliet metro areas. State Department of Employment Security Director Lolita Didrikson says over the month private sector companies increased their payrolls by 12,500 positions. She says job growth in the trade sector so far this year is 32,400 additional jobs. 6,200 of those were created in July. A suspension for two LaSalle County deputies has turned into a political squabble between the county sheriff and state's attorney, Captain Robert Scutt, and Deputy Jeff Whalen will be suspended for 20 days without pay for filing an incomplete arrest report. Whalen is accused of failing to report that he found 67 pounds of marijuana in a car during a traffic stop. He reported that Scutt and drug-sniffing dog found the cannabis and has since said that Scutt coerced him into changing the report. Republican Sheriff Tony Condi contends that the arrest report should have been handled eternal, internally and that the state's attorney, Joseph Navarro's investigation, is politically motivated. Navarro, a Democrat, denies playing, excuse me, denies playing politics with the investigation. Condi says he won't be surprised if the controversy becomes a campaign issue if he chooses to seek a second term next year. Well, a plan for a composting facility in Kendall County is one step closer to reality today. That story's next as the news continues. a machine to life. It's not diesel fuel, hydraulic fluid, or electrical systems. At Caterpillar, it's the hours of hard work, the heart and the spirit of all our people that give Caterpillar its soul. Diesel engines may power our machines, but the key that starts them is our people. Imagine the luxury of being able to sit anywhere, anytime. Now you can with Sports Seat. It's that simple. Sports Seat is a durable, lightweight walking stick that gets you where you want to go. Sports Seat's unique pistol grip handle is safe and functional. Just unfold it, and it's a sturdy, comfortable seat. Sports Seat guarantees you a seat for any activity golfing, camping, travel, virtually any spectator event. Use it at work or at play, for the family or for yourself. Sports Seat makes a great gift. Just think of the possibilities. Sports Seat is strong. It's patented. The rugged design holds up to 250 pounds, yet it weighs only 28 ounces. Guaranteed for a year. Use it for a lifetime. Sports Seat, only 1995 Visa or MasterCard. Call 1-800-351-8100 now for a special limited time offer. That's 1-800-351-8100. Or send check or money order plus $4.50 shipping and handling to Sports Seat. A proposal for a landscaped waste composting facility in Kendall County 
was heard last night by the Plan Commission. The O.M. Scott Company is seeking permission to construct the facility on 57.5 acres at the corner of Galena and Beecher Roads. A good-sized crowd turned out to hear the debate, and many of the issues that have been raised at the Township Plan Commission level were brought up again. Truck traffic, noise, and odor. Commission members also asked how the proposed facility would fit into the county's newly adopted solid waste management plan. Solid waste coordinator Marlon Hartman says composting is high on the list of requirements. Well, the state says that you have to do first source reduction, then recycling and composting, third incineration, and fourth landfill. The last thing they want you to do is landfill, but they want you to recycle and compost. That's number two. Source reduction is don't generate the garbage to begin with because we have to reduce, we have to divert the amounts we're sending to landfills. How did composting get popular? Up until 1990, 20% of everything that went into a landfill was grass, sticks, and our other shrubs that we like to throw away once we're tired of looking at it. So all of our yard waste was going to a landfill. Well, all of a sudden they realized, geez, we're running out of landfills. And nobody wants to have a landfill anymore. So they says, we need to start doing alternative technologies. Composting, it's been around for a long time. So they said composting and recycling are equal. They're at the same level. We want people to recycle and we want people to compost. County Plan Commission members looked over the list of stipulations for the special use proposed by the township dealing with a wide variety of issues from hours of operation to landscaping and berming at the site. To the list they added a few of their own, including the establishment of, in, of an intergovernmental agreement between the county and Bristol Township for the sharing of host fees and their preference for site access off Galena Road and the establishment of detention pond for dealing with water runoff. The plan commission's vote on the issue was 8 to 2. It now moves back to the township for a vote by the township board and then will be heard by the county's building and zoning committee. A woman arrested as part of a three county drug sweep in May has been sentenced to two years in a state corrections facility. According to DeKalb County court officials, 23 year old Randy B. Rodriguez was given a prison term after she pleaded guilty this week to charges of unlawful possession of a firearm. Authorities say Rodriguez has ties to the Latin King Street Gang and had a prior conviction for mob action. Members of the United Auto Workers Local 145 and their families will be celebrating the spirit of the upcoming Labor Day holiday a bit early. Union officials say they plan to stage a rally this Saturday morning on Route 31 in front of the Montgomery Caterpillar plant. Caterpillar employees have been working without a contract since October of 1991, and previous rallies at plant gates have prompted hundreds of workers to turn out. Local 145 President John Paul Yarborough says, quote, this rally is to show Caterpillar and the world that there are determined as ever to carry on the struggle for a fair and just contract, end quote. The rally will be Saturday at 6.30 a.m. and run through 8 a.m. Restructuring is underway at the Ameritech Corporation. The Ameritech has told its employees it will eliminate 1,200 to 1,500 management positions by the end of this year as the next step in its organizational restructuring plan. Company said about 800 of the reductions will occur by mid-September. William L. Weiss, Ameritech's chief executive officer, said the changes represent the final phase of the company's strategic plan to structure its business units to serve customers in the most efficient, responsive manner. He says that he is firmly convinced that the changes are being made. Those that are being made are in the best interest of the long-term health of Ameritech. Putting in irrigation systems is not a new idea, but new innovations are making those systems work more efficiently. Will Pimple reports. Irrigation, a vital ingredient in growing millions of pounds of food we eat daily. With dwindling water resources in many areas of the nation, many farmers have turned to drip irrigation. And by putting the drip tubes underground, farmers can increase yields while using less of the precious water according to scientists with the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Fresno, California. Soil physicist Claude Finet with the Agricultural Research Service and his colleagues have developed new subsurface drip systems and management techniques that deliver water and nutrients directly to the root zone of the crops. He explains how it works. We've learned, first of all, to control the system using very high frequency. In the past, when people buried subsurface drip irrigation system, they had root intrusion, and eventually, over a matter of two, three years, the system was all plugged up. We learned to first apply certain nutrients 
the frequency of the irrigation and so forth so that now we can keep the system without wood intrusion for several years. The scientists have found several types of emitters are useful in this system. Dr. Finney also points out the drip system can more efficiently apply fumigants. The scientists have tested the system on tomatoes, beans, cotton, and wheat, and yields have increased substantially on all of the crops. These improved subsurface drip irrigation systems are increasing yields and conserving precious water. Will Pemble reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The Kendall County Youth Service Board is trying to raise funds to keep the program financed through its garage sale and raffle this weekend. This Saturday and Sunday at the Towns Crossing Shopping Center Oswego, community members and businesses throughout Kendall County will have donated items and services sold to make the, the event successful. Many items will be raffled during the event, including the grand prize, a bear paw quilt designed and constructed by several local quilters. That quilt is made from leftovers donated t-shirts from last year's sale. Tickets for the raffle can be purchased from Youth Services board members. It was a busy day in sports. Dave Olson has all of the details for us after this. You want to have some fun? Some California fun? Then order the Aqua Sling from Riva Sport and let the fun fly. The Aqua Sling water balloon slingshot is just plain fun. Fun on the run and fun in the sun. The Aquasling can launch a water balloon the length of a football field, or double that with a 200-yard competition model. The Aquasling is made in America and designed to last. It's easily used by one, two, or three people, and it comes with a lifetime guarantee. With your Aquasling, you get 72 biodegradable balloons, the garden hose fill nozzle, official Aquasling target, and detailed instructions on its, uh, proper use. Just call 1-800-544-7900. That's 1-800-544-7900. Have your credit card ready and we can ship it to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's right. You can be having California fun in just a few days. The Aquasling costs a mere $19.95. So what are you waiting for? Order your California fun today. Hi, I'm Pam Nelson. Join me tonight at 6.30 on Fox Valley Today. Do you need a day away from the active role of raising children? Well, Therese Green will be here to tell us about Mother's Day Away, a different approach to daycare. And Joe Lighty will have a look at Fox Valley Theater. And tomorrow, Bonnie and Joseph Dodero of Geneva will be here to explain their Tai Chi organization and the special events coming up. Join me tonight at 6.30 on Fox Valley Today, here on TV 30, the Fox Valley's TV station. Well, Notre Dame football fans can relax after a scare on a Tuesday morning. Head football coach Lou Holtz, after complaining of chest pains, went to a South Bend hospital for a battery of tests. After the conclusion of those tests, the doctors commented that Holtz's cholesterol level was lower than all but one player on the football team. After missing the morning practice, Holtz was back on the field Tuesday evening. To top that, Holtz is making rumblings about an undefeated season. Now that doesn't sound like Holtz. The Cubs and the White Sox are both off tonight. The North Siders will head for Atlanta for a three-game weekend series against the Braves. The Braves are tomahawk chopping the Giants' lead in the West after sweeping San Francisco in candlestick. The South Siders will welcome the Minnesota Twins at Comiskey tomorrow with a twin bill. The White Sox lead the Texas Rangers in the American League West. Well, the Atlanta Braves have worked out a trade that will shore up their pitching staff. The Braves have made a deal to acquire Dennis Martinez from the Montreal Expos for Brian Hunter. The Braves needed help in their bullpen, and the Expos were in need of a quality first baseman. Hunter had been demoted to the minors after Atlanta had acquired Fred McGriff from the San Diego Padres. Well, the Michael Jordan Ronald McDonald Children's Golf Classic will go on as scheduled Friday, but without the Bulls superstar. Even though Jordan had participated in the Rose Elder Invitational last weekend, Jordan has decided he needs to spend more time with his family before he can resume his public appearances. Substituting for Jordan will be the NBA's bad boy, Sir Charles Barkley of the Phoenix Suns. Making personal appearances from the Chicago Bulls at the Golf Classic will be Corey Williams, B.J. Armstrong, John Paxton, and Scott Williams. Well, a free youth soccer clinic will be conducted at Northern Illinois University Saturday at 10 o'clock. The free clinic will be conducted by the players and coaches and will discuss the fundamentals of the game. 
there will be some giveaways for the youngsters. And following the clinic, the women's team will play an exhibition game against Loyola, with the men's teams to play immediately afterwards. Well, on this date in baseball history, the first Major League Baseball game ever televised was broadcast by NBC in 1939. It was a doubleheader between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Cincinnati Reds, which was aired from Ebbets Field. I wonder how many young people really knew the Dodgers were from Brooklyn and not Los Angeles. Well, the Chicago Bears will play their final preseason game against the Dallas Cowboys Friday night at Soldier Field. Teams must make their final roster cuts by Monday and be at the 47-man roster. Presently, the Bears are at 60, and many of the players that have been injured are beginning to show signs of returning, with the exception of Neil Anderson. Anderson will not play tomorrow night due to a hamstring injury. Bears head coach Dave Wonstadt will be going up against his former boss, Jimmy Johnson, head coach of the Cowboys tomorrow night. And also, Ron Turner, offensive coordinator, will face his brother, Norv, who is the offensive coordinator for the Cowboys. According to Cowboys head coach Jimmy Johnson, he says not to be too concerned about an 0-3 preseason record. In 89, the Cowboys were 3-1, and, and they finished with a dismal 1-15. Well, the Aurora Lightning swept a doubleheader against the Dolan and Murphy Shamrocks with a pair of shutouts. The first game was 6 to nothing as the light, uh, Lightning scored four times in the third inning. In the nightcap, a real pitcher's duel took place between Steve Sturkle and Sean Johnson of the Shamrocks and Ron Sturkle and, and Paul Auger of the Lightning. The game was scoreless going into the bottom of the seventh when the first pitch to Lightning shortstop Gary Hundley left the yard in a hurry and hit the center field scoreboard to give the Lightning a 1-0 win. The Lightning will host the Decatur Pride this weekend. The Decatur Ball Club finished fourth in the ISC World Tournament. The Lightning improved their season record to 63-18, while the Shamrocks fell to 60-20. And, and Dean, that's a look at sports here for a Thursday night. Well, thank you, Dave. Well, there is more hot, muggy weather in store for Fox Valley residents. Larry has the tales when TV 30 News returns. Protect your treasured dining room tabletop from burns, hot serving dishes, scratches, and stains with a custom table pad. These deluxe table pads are from the number one maker of table pads in the country. Factory Direct Table Pad Company has been protecting fine dining room tables like yours for years. And by ordering your table pad direct from the factory, your cost is as low as $29.95. Compare that to identical pads costing $100 or more. How did they do it? By eliminating the high markup charge by retail stores. Order your pad direct from the factory and save up to 70% off the retail price. All pads are fully insulated with soft cotton felt bottoms and are available available in almost any wood grain or solid color. They fold for easy storage, are guaranteed to fit any shape table, and carry a factory guarantee of up to 20 years. Don't risk damage to your table another day. Protect it forever and add a touch of elegance with a custom table pad starting from only $29.95. Call now and we'll send you free samples of our table pads, plus information on how to save up to 70% on your deluxe dining room. Good evening, I'm Dean Abbott. And I'm Sarah Chernis. It's Friday, August 27th. And in news headlines tonight, Aurora Crime Stoppers has entered in the search for a man accused of killing his ex-girlfriend and her unborn child. And an Aurora priest accused of sexual misconduct has pleaded not guilty to the charges. After a year and a half of debate, Yorkville City Council members have reached a decision on a controversial business proposed for the countryside center area. And three and a half years after the fact, lawsuits have been filed seeking damages for the killer tornado that ripped through Plainfield and Shorewood. We'll have these and other stories tonight on TV 30 News. Sensible treat that still tastes good? Try Dole Fruit and Juice Bars. Real fruit chunks, frozen in delicious fruit juice. A sensible treat you'll really want to eat, unless you really want this. Dole Fruit and Juice Bars, the great taste you can feel good about. And for the kids, introducing new Dole Juice Bars. Delicious fruit juice and nothing artificial. At J.C. Penney, you'll find more things that last. Because we put quality first. We feel better. And look brighter. With more things made to stand up. 
More things designed to lie down. And more things you can count on. Over. And over. And while quality is something we look for first, our great values have made us a name that lasts. Hi, I'm Paul Buck, your Uncle John, your dealer in Simonite. Going over two more important points. First, instant credit. Get on-the-spot financing, 90 days same as cash, or low-rate financing. Also, 30-day promise. Try any of our products for 30 days. If you don't like it for any reason, bring it back for prompt and courteous refund. Volume buying means volume pricing. At one of the largest John Deere dealers in the area, Paul Buck Incorporated, Route 34 in Salmonock. Police say a domestic dispute was the cause of a knifing in Aurora last night. According to the reports, two brothers have become involved in an argument near Jericho Circle. One of the men grabbed the knife and slashed the other. Tyrone Burnett was transported to Mercy Center Hospital with lacerations on his neck, arm, and stomach. Police say 20 sutures were needed to close the wounds. He was treated and released. Police say Charles Burnett was taken into custody, charged with ag aggravated battery. $1,000 reward has been posted for information leading to the arrest of Sean Roscoe Judge. Judge is accused of killing his former girlfriend and an unborn baby earlier this week. 24-year-old has been searched for since Sunday when he allegedly killed 20-year-old Peggy Lee Richardson. According to police, Judge had approached Richardson, who was with her new boyfriend, at a courtyard in the 300 block of Old Indian Trail when Judge approached her and asked to talk. When the woman told the man she refused to speak with him, Judge pulled a gun and opened fire. Richardson died Monday at Mercy Center Hospital. Judge is charged with two counts of murder, two counts of intentional homicide to a fetus, and one count of attempted murder. Richardson's boyfriend, 32-year-old Herman Glass, was struck in the shoulder by one of the bullets. He was treated at the hospital. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Sean Roscoe Judge, you're asked to call Aurora Crime Stoppers at 892-1000. If information you give leads to the arrest, you could be eligible for up to $1,000 in reward money. The teenager that fell out of a pickup truck earlier this week died at Mercy Center Hospital, according to spokespersons. Eldridge Slug of the 2600 block of Stanton Court died at the hospital he had been brought to after falling from the open bed of a truck near Bittler Road and the DuPage Parkway. According to police, the truck hit a bump when Slug lost his balance and fell from the vehicle. Slug died at 11.15 in the morning. Proposal to allow the Car Star facility in the city of Yorkville has been approved after nearly a year and a half of debate. The planned unit development agreement was unanimously approved by council members with two aldermen representing Countryside Center dissenting. Before the plan was approved, Alderman Burton Colmer suggested minor changes to the ordinance relating to the amount of times the city can conduct on-site inspections. Alderman Jim Stafford expressed his concern for particular testing, which was left out of the PUD once per year, but not at a cost to Yorkville residents. Mayor Ken Kiddo says a development project can now get underway. Now the fishers can go in and get their billing permit, and uh, everything will be on go. It's been basically a year and a half now on this issue. It's over with. I believe uh, the council made the right decision. There was so much put into this, and uh, like I say, now it's on a go. It's over with. We're looking forward to uh, working with them now. Uh, this, he's going to do a beautiful job. Kiddo says this has been a drawn-out process and the citizens were given their fair chance to express their views on the plan. As of tonight, yes, the f citizens were treated fairly. We heard all, all aspects. We're not going to please everybody. Some wanted higher costs, some wanted lower cost. Uh, you just can't please everybody. I believe we did do the right thing. Yes, they will be checked out. Uh, as you heard tonight, Alderman Kel uh, Bert Kelmer, he did check with the EPA, the IEPA. Everybody's checked out with, yes, they'll, will, they will come out and check the facility if there is a complaint. Uh, everything, I believe, got blown out of proportion quite big. And with the controversy of it being there, I believe that's why it got blown out of proportion. Now it's going in. Now it's time to work together, and we'll keep a close eye on it. And yes, the city's going to be there. Complaints, everybody kept saying, oh, you're not going to hear our complaints. We are here. Any council meeting, any committee of the whole, yes, we hear complaints. If the people don't want to come in, okay. But when it's all started from day one, that's where most of us aldermen and myself took it into consideration on the people that were there at the very first meeting. 
Dean Fisher, project developer, says he'll file for a building permit so construction can begin as soon as possible. Plans call for the construction of a Midas muffler shop and a Car Star automotive facility on Route 34 next to the Hatcher Medical Center in Countryside Center subdivision. Officials in DuPage County are still unable to grasp revenue collected at the gas pump. The county's four cent per gallon gasoline tax is being collected, but a Cook County judge has ruled the gasoline tax unconstitutional. In November, Judge Earl Arcus felt lawmakers were in the wrong to allow the county and two other counties in the state to tax at the pump. Nearly $11.5 million is being held in reserve while the Illinois Supreme Court reviews the ruling. Pending the outcome, county officials could either be granted the opportunity to use the money or if the tax is ruled unconstitutional, the money will likely go back to the fuel stations. It was three years after the fact, but the killer tornado that ripped through the corner of Kendall County and the well, devastated portions of Plainfield and the Shorewood area has spawned a new series of lawsuits aimed at the National Weather Service. A federal suit has been filed charging the National Weather Service with failure to warn residents in the path of the storm and seeking almost $75 million in damages. The suit was filed yesterday on behalf of over a dozen individuals who were either killed or severely injured by the storm. The suit alleges that employees of the Weather Service failed to direct or recognize radar signatures that indicate severe thunderstorms or tornadic activity. Legislation sponsored by a Fox Valley congressman has been signed into law allowing easier gang member prosecution. That story as the news continues. Not without new jet dry, they aren't. Just look inside a drop of rinse water. There's detergent, minerals, and food particles that'll be redeposited on your dishes in the rinse cycle. You need jet dry with extra rinse enhancers. Jet dry's clear rinsing action removes ghastly residues that cause spots and film. Clearly, new jet dry with extra rinse enhancers for shiny, clean dishes. But I wish I could stick my teeth into one right now. So what are we waiting for? This is what I was craving. Me too. It's what cream cheese was invented for. The Lenders Bagel. First you crave, then you rave. I just can't say enough about them. The bigger your corn gets, the smaller and more painful your shoe feels. Dr. Scholl's corn removers quickly cushion the pain. Then they're guaranteed to dissolve the corn. So buy Dr. Scholl's corn removers and get back into things. It's the biggest, it's the best, it's the fun-filled family place in town. It's Funway Entertainment Center in Batavia, located off Route 25 just off the Fox Valley Bike Trail. Try your hand at miniature golf, step up to the baseball and softball batting cages, take to the wheel of the competitive skid cars, or bump your way around in bumper cars. The new attraction everyone will be challenging, the Crazy Maze, or the state-of-the-art sound and climate-conditioned roller skating. It's always a big hit. Come spin your wheels at Funway Entertainment Center Route 25 in Batavia. Getting there is all the fun. The Aurora priest accused of sexually assaulting a 15-year-old boy three years ago pleaded not guilty in Kane County Court yesterday. 71-year-old Augustine K. Jones was charged with four felony counts of aggravated sexual abuse of a teenage boy. Penalty for such charges can range from probation to a 28-year prison sentence. The Marmion Abbey priest is charged in connection with an incident that allegedly took place at St. Teresa's Catholic Church in Aurora, where Jones had been offering a mass. Now, according to reports, Jones previously pleaded guilty to similar charges in 1968. Jones is accused of allegedly, was of allegedly touching the 15-year-old's genitals and placing the boy's hands on his own during a meeting in the church. Jones was released without posting bond as he was not a threat to flee the area with a request to appear on September 23rd in the Kane County Court. Governor Jim Edgar today signed into law legislation initiated by State Representative Tom Cross that would make it easier for prosecutors to convict gang members. Senate Bill 483 contains language originally sponsored by Cross, a Republican from Oswego, that would standardize the definition of gang, criminal street gang, or organized gang. When there are up to four definitions determining what a gang or gang member is, it's tougher for prosecutors to convict the guilty, said Cross. The bill authorizes cons construction of a supermaximum prison in order to alleviate prison crowding in Illinois. The prison is also part of Governor Edgar's plan Reform Illinois Correctional Facilities. A site has not yet been chosen for the prison. 
Well, State Senator Pat Welsh of Peru says he's pleased to see that Senate President James Pate Phillip is now interested in school funding reform, but also says his support is three months late. Phillip has come out in support of a plan that would lower property taxes in return for higher sales taxes and increase in personal and corporate income taxes. Welsh, a Democrat, says he proposed similar legislation in the spring and it was stalled in committee in the Republican-controlled Senate. Welsh added he believes Phillip's support of his bill when it was introduced could have avoided the Chicago City school crisis. The issue of switching property tax with the income tax to fund Illinois schools has also become an issue in the governor's race. Illinois Comptroller Don Clough Nesh recently announced her candidacy for governor endorsing the replacement of the property tax with the state income tax. Well, as lawmakers discuss plans to hold a special session regarding the bailout of Chicago schools, the head of the Illinois' largest taxpayer organization is charging the proposed hike to subsidize the schools would make the Illinois corporate income tax the highest in the nation. Jim Tobin, president of the National Taxpayers United of Illinois, says the 13.3% rate could discourage companies from locating in the state and might hinder companies from expanding or hiring new workers. Tobin says legislative leaders are proposing raise in base corporate income tax rates combined with a replacement tax that would result in a staggering rate and could possibly plunge Illinois into depression or increase the unemployment rate. Tobin is calling the proposal unconscionable to bail out the school system that despite the high salaries and lush benefits is, quote, still the worst public school system in the nation, unquote. Tobin is attempting to gather support by calling uh, on the state businesses to oppose the increases. Two Kane County teenagers were taken into custody after a routine traffic stop. Aurora police stopped a red Chevrolet van in the 1100 block of Superior and reportedly discovered approximately 85 grams of cannabis. 17-year-old Chester Ish of Elburn and 17-year-old Douglas Diomones of Elgin were taken into custody. Police say that two teens face charges of felony possession of cannabis. And breakthrough new research reveals that a common test for recurrent colon cancer doesn't do its job. On today's TV30 Healthcare Report, Kathleen Quinn explains the impact of patients and the healthcare system. As many as 57,000 people may die of colon and rectal cancer this year. If detected early and removed, there's a good chance the patient will survive. As part of follow-up treatment, physicians often use a common blood test called CEA to determine whether colon cancer has reappeared. But questions have cropped up about the accuracy of CEA tests and whether they catch the disease early enough to give patients another chance at a cure. The latest evidence in this week's Journal of the American Medical Association casts serious doubts. We feel the CEA test doesn't do its job. Uh, it has not demonstrated in this very large population of patients that it will improve uh, cure rates. In his study, 84% of physicians used CEA tests to screen patients with colon cancer, though there are other ways like chest x-rays, physical exams, and blood counts. The CEA test missed recurrences of cancer in 40% of patients. Equally alarming, the test gave a false positive result in one of six patients. That can put patients under an emotional and financial burden as they seek expensive exams like an MRI to confirm the blood test. With as many as half a million patients being screened for recurrent colon cancer at a price of about $1 billion, both the disease and the cost to treat it become important factors. We need better technology uh, for identifying potentially curative disease technology that can be applied in a cost-effective fashion. Some expensive tests are unavoidable, but Dr. Mortel suggests if physicians abandon the use of a test which apparently doesn't work, it will help hold down costs without creating chaos for patients. In Rochester, Minnesota, I'm Kathleen Quinn reporting. Well, Fox Valley residents will get a chance this weekend to see what working the fields used to entail. Kendall County Historical Society is holding an old-fashioned threshing day Sunday from 9 a.m. to 5 at Lyon Historical Farm on Route 71. In days past, many neighbors would gather to share the work of threshing the grain. Threshing machine, which combines four separate operations into one unit, threshing, separating, cleaning, and stacking, was often moved from farm to farm. The Lion Farm, according to the State Historical Society, is one of the few working historical farms in Illinois. All the machinery on display is in working condition. A new program has been established at a Fox Valley University to help fund an athletic program. Dave Allset has sports next.
brings you to closet. I'm looking to cook pickles. I'm a pickle cook. We don't cook our pickles. Why don't you cook your pickles? It's just a matter of taste. Unlike most pickles, Clawson pickles are never cooked. They're always cold, always crisp, always delicious. You don't cook your pickles. That's funny. Top off a plain old salad with delicious cheddar cheese, and you know what your family will say. Cheddar cheese? Yum. Great salad, hon. Mom, more cheddar. That's better. Cheddar makes everything better. I remember when he was working on this piece. He was searching for something. Oh. This is one of his earlier works. It's bold, it's simple, it's... It's some guy's jacket. When your stomach takes a wrong turn, there's no faster or better relief than extra strength Maalox. That's why Maalox moments... Any opinions on the broom closet? Only last a moment. Protect your treasured dining room tabletop from burns, hot serving dishes, scratches, and stains with a custom table pad. These deluxe table pads are from the number one maker of table pads in the country. Factory Direct Table Pad Company has been protecting fine dining room tables like yours for years. And by ordering your table pad direct from the factory, your cost is as low as $29.95. Compare that to identical pads costing $100 or more. How did they do it? By eliminating the high markup charge by retail stores. Order your pad direct from the factory and save up to 70% off the retail price. All pads are fully insulated with soft cotton felt bottoms and are available in almost any wood grain or solid color. They fold for easy storage, are guaranteed to fit any shape table, and carry a factory guarantee of up to 20 years. Don't risk damage to your table another day. Protect it forever and add a touch of elegance with a custom table pad starting from only $29.95. Call now and we'll send you free samples of our table pads, plus information on how to save up to 70% on your deluxe dining room table pad. Call 1-800-527-6800. That's 1-800-527-6800. Call now. Well, North Central College is trying to implement a new club to help generate some excitement in their football program at NCC. The 12th Man Club will kick off activities for the 1993 season with a pigskin picnic on the lawn of the college presidents at North Central College next Friday night, beginning at 6 o'clock. The club is to generate interest in the program and assist in raising needed funds. Anyone interested in joining the club can contact head coach Bill Mack at Myrner Fieldhouse at area code 708-420-3440. Well, according to Mets team president Fred Wilpon, Vice, uh, Vince Coleman excuse me, will never wear a Mets uniform again, even if he is cleared of those felony charges in Los Angeles. Coleman has one year left on his four-year $12 million deal. Wilpon says, and I quote, the Mets have the right to act, release, trade, or fight him on his contract. Presently, Coleman is in, on administrative leave with pay until his October 8th court date. Well, last night we reported that Dennis Martinez of the Montreal Expos would be heading to Atlanta. But apparently Martinez has exercised his right of a refusal as a 10-5 man. Martinez, being a 10-year Major League veteran and five years with his current, current club, has the right of refusal on any trades and could not see where he fit into the Braves' starting pitching rotation. Speculation is that the Braves originally made the deal to prevent the Giants from t uh, making the same trade. Well, Sean Burles, who's the son of former Major Leaguer Jeff Burles, pitched his second consecutive no-hitter as the Long Beach defeated Bedford, New Hampshire, 11 to nothing, to advance to tomorrow's Little League Championship game. And not to be outdone, the Panama team defeated Germany 6 to nothing in the other semifinal game. Yes, it was another no-hitter. Well, players have been known to show their emotions on the field. When upset, even big leaguers can pull bonehead mistakes. And kids, don't try this at home. Kids, no matter how frustrated you may get, please don't try this at home. And McDowell threw the ball away! Oh, what a crazy play! Roger McDowell just threw the ball away. He was so upset. I never saw that before, I don't think. That's what I like about the game. It's different every time. Well, the Fox Valley YMCA has announced that they will be offering two new adult sports programs this September. Adult fall football will begin September 4th. Sign-ups may be made by a team or individually. Games are, are to be played on Saturday afternoons with teams limited to eight players uh, at a time and 11-player roster. The YMCA is also introducing a men's three-on-three -three basketball league. Teams are to have a maximum of five players on a roster. 
Standings will be kept and awards will be given to the top two teams. A couple of rules you may want to know about, games are half court, played two quarters per night, and players must call their own fouls. And that could prove interesting. The three-on-three -three season will run from September 15th till October 20th. For more information, please call the Fox Valley Family YMCA at area code 708-552-4100. Well, the YMCA in Plano is also announcing some youth sports programs new this fall. Uh, outdoor Youth Soccer League for grades 1 through 4, and flag football for those in grades 3rd through 6th. All games are to be played on Saturdays with a registration deadline of September 4th. The Y takes pride in their fair play philosophy. Everyone that signs up will play. There are no tryouts. And teams meet weekly for a one-hour practice, and all games are played on weekends. Again, the number at the Fox Valley YMCA is area code 708-552-4100. Well, in high school golf yesterday at Phillips Park, Aurora Central Catholic won its own event with a team score of 177. Oswego followed with a 182, and Sandwich finished in third with a 183. Chris Peterson of Oswego was the individual medal winner with a 39. And a couple of program notes, don't forget that tonight at 11.30 and on Saturday mornings at 11, you can see Bill Wyatt's Sports Challenge return here on TV30. Catch all the fun as Bill tries to match his sports skills each week with his special guest. And that's a look at sports for a Friday evening. Have a great weekend. And thank you, Dave. Well, more pleasant weather is in store for the weekend. Forecast is coming up next. Imagine the luxury of being able to sit anywhere, anytime. Now you can with Sports Seat. It's that simple. Sports Seat is a durable, lightweight walking stick that gets you where you want to go. Sports Seat's unique pistol grip handle is safe and functional. Just unfold it, and it's a sturdy, comfortable seat. Sports Seat guarantees you a seat for any activity golfing, camping, travel, virtually any spectator event. Use it at work or at play, for the family or for yourself. Sports Seat makes a great gift. Just think of the possibilities. Sports Seat is strong. It's patented rugged design holds up to 250 pounds, yet it weighs only 28 ounces. Guaranteed for a year. Use it for a lifetime. Sports Seat. Only $19.95 Visa or MasterCard. Call 1-800-351-8100 now for a special limited time offer. That's 1-800-351-8100. Or send check or money order plus $4.50 shipping and handling to Sports Seat. comes in a brand new flavor. Water. Introducing easy to swallow Maalox Caplets. The antacid that doesn't taste like one. Dieters have different needs, so Accutrim made different formulas. My appetite was humongous before Accutrim Maximum Strength. I would lose my willpower after 3 p.m. until late day. If it weren't for 16 hour, I'd eat all day and all night. Accutrim, one is right for you. I'm a smoker. My co-workers aren't. So from 9 to 5, I chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. That cool, clean taste is something everyone in the office can enjoy. So instead of smoking, I share my pure chewing satisfaction. It looks like things might cool off a bit here in the Fox Valley, just in time for the weekend. Here's Larry with the forecast. Another unseasonably warm day around the Fox Valley, but relief is just around the corner. Good evening, Larry Nelson with an early look at the TV30 weather. Well, as you can see, the frontal system is moving ever so closer. Low pressure system going to kick up some rain showers this evening here in the valley. But then it'll start turning cooler as we'll have northwesterly winds around 10 to 15 miles an hour later on this evening and towards tomorrow morning. High pressure system will eventually come to dominate our weather uh, on the backside. It's now out in parts of Wyoming. It'll be rolling in here and keeping temperatures only with a high about 79 and much cooler, less humid type conditions for the next couple of days. High temperatures today really on the warm side. Here in the Fox Valley, we warmed up to 93 hot, steamy degrees. We find to the west of us temperatures, as you can see, into the 60s only today and 70s. 
The deep south sweltering again, the lower Mississippi Valley, many areas there reaching temperatures of uh, 95 to 100 degrees and heat indexes over 100 degrees. So that uh, warm weather for at least the upper Midwest will snap and things are going to change as the frontal system comes through. Overnight lows tonight predicted around 65 here in the Fox Valley, 40s and 50s out to the west of us. The deep south, as you can see, in the lower Mississippi River Valley region, still on the warm side with uh, lows tonight about 75. But again, here in the valley, we'll cool off eventually into the lower 60s, it looks like at this point. Extended forecast through the, through the 4th of September. Look for temperatures to be much above normal for the Fox Valley uh, and also most of the eastern third of the nation. Again, the Pacific Northwest continues in a cool grip of cool air coming in off of the Pacific Ocean that just doesn't seem to want to give up. And they'll have temperatures averaging as much as 10 degrees below normal for the same period. Precipitation will tend to subside a bit here for the northern Illinois region through the 4th of September. We will have a pretty much near normal precipitation pattern while we find the Pacific Northwest and much of western United States will have above normal precipitation while the lower Ohio Valley region and much of uh, Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Texas we're looking for uh, precipitation to be a bit below normal for the same period. Taking a look at that forecast for tonight now, there's a 40% chance of storms early, then uh, clearing, cool, northwest winds uh, eventually at 10, 15, maybe even 20 miles an hour, and I see an overnight low around 65 degrees, maybe even just a tad chillier before daybreak. Tomorrow, Saturday, a sunny day, cool, clear, less humid, 79 is a high temperature. Saturday night, increasing clouds mild, overnight low about 64 or so. For your Sunday, look for partly cloudy skies. Pleasant with a high 83. Monday, partly cloudy, 85 is a high. And Tuesday, scattered showers and 85 is a high temperature. 93 was our high officially today around the Fox Valley. The low last night, 70. And we find 613 for sunrise tomorrow, and it'll be a very pleasant one. 734 sunset. Normally at this time of the year, 84 the high and 62 the low. Well, there you have it. That's how weather shapes up around the valley. We'll be back at 10 with more. Thank you, Larry. Well, police in Elgin are looking for two men who robbed a local woman of her microwave oven late last week, reportedly because her nephew had sold them drywall dust instead of cocaine. Woman told police the men demanded $20 restitution for the white powder, and when the 32-year-old woman told them that her nephew wasn't home, they took the $250 microwave. Woman told police that the men did assure her that she could have the microwave back as soon as they got their refund. And that's our report for Friday, August 27th. I'm Dean Abbott. And I'm Sarah Turnus. Have a great weekend. Montgomery and all of the Fox Valley. This is WFXV TV 30.